What's up guys? Hope you're doing well. I'm gonna keep rolling on this theme we've been on a little bit recently, which is just hearing God's voice, sensing God's direction, and that being a, like a helpful direction, <laughs> an accurate voice. Uh, you know, in hindsight, something that was for my good and for God's glory not something that um, I'd be able to be batting 100 with if I was just pulling it out of my thoughts, you know. But the one I wanted to share about today is a little deeper into something I mentioned related to finding out when I should propose. How just randomly one day and I, I just knew it was the Lord's voice. I thought, but it was like God's thought in my head. <laughs> November 30th was the dates proposed. This is the first week of August when this happens. <clears throat> November 30th, save $10,000 by May. In business world first, but the main impact of your life will be through ministry. That's another topic for another video. But I had been praying at that time a lot, like, am I supposed to do business or ministry? And the short version is that turns out both. But I want to dive into this save $10,000 by May because um, by September 1st, I had $0.00 effectively. I mean, maybe a hundred. Like, I spent everything on uh, an engagement ring, and then I'm going into the school year. So I'm like, how many months is that? September, October, November, December, plus five. That's nine months. I got nine months as a junior in college who's, you know, a full-time student and volunteering 20 hours a week at church, and I gotta find a way to to net $10,000 in the bank in nine months time. And I start crunching the numbers, and I'm like, this is gonna be impossible. But the worst part was, it wasn't quite impossible. <laughs> but as I was crunching the numbers, I'm like, well, if I don't buy any toiletries, and I just about never get a haircut, and if I never buy groceries and work 25 hours a week, then I think I can do it. <laughs> and now if you're crunching numbers on what a guy can make working for $11 an hour, that might still not add up, but a couple things that were uh, wind in my sails. One is that I did not have to pay um, for rent my parents paid my rent uh, directly and then um, also didn't have to pay like health insurance didn't have to pay for my phone uh, and a couple other things I had a $400 a month stipend from my parents that was essentially to cover basic food and gas so that's what that was for, food and gas. And then I also had the, I think it amounted to $600 a semester. It was the cheapest campus dining dollar plan available. And my parents uh, did that for me as well. And that basically meant I could afford to have a panda bowl every weekday for sure and so I always got that meal in even though I didn't buy, I really didn't buy groceries that year um, the things we do for love you know um, except you know I was really just doing it because I felt like the Lord said save $10,000 by May I spent a long time like are you sure and and so anyways I uh you know, it was, it was difficult. You know, it was obviously very difficult in my life. And when you make extreme choices like not buying groceries, 
um, you know, it's difficult, uh, socially too, and not just in a, oh, I don't fit in type of way, but when you have friends that care about being healthy and care about, um, hearing God accurately, and then I'm doing this thing that seems so ridiculous, you know, multiple times for sure I receive pushback from people like, you know, we never see you anymore, or, or just like generally doubting whether this is a good idea or whether this is from the Lord and I wasn't like above that rebuke you know it was like it's like the next morning after someone would say something like that I would just go into my time of prayer like Lord like can I be done with this <laughs> like 10,000 by May like this is not this is not my financial ambition you know like I would have thought I might save five thousand dollars by May, and that's probably what I would have done, somewhere around there. But not intentionally, just like just trying to live frugally, knowing that hey, there's a chance we get married this coming summer. We didn't know though that we would get married that coming summer. Um, but of course, I felt like the more I save, the more of a chance there is, and so there was a, you know, the things we do for love factor in the mix for sure but it was really just I think I'm supposed to do this and a couple you know just takeaways from that year is you know I've, you know resubmitting that that word to the Lord you know are you sure are you sure and will you, will you take this away it just made it more clear that it is from him because he did not like remove that burden or that strong sense that that was his direction. So I'm like, well, I guess I just keep going. And it was seriously a grind. I don't know if you can really imagine what I'm saying here, but like, it was hard. <laughs> like, like many, uh, many just pack of ramen noodles, you know, that I had stashed up many, uh, dry oats I didn't have any cinnamon or any sugar so I was like I don't want to eat this oatmeal cooked properly without anything in it because that makes me want to barf so let me just grab a handful and throw it in my mouth a lot of nights of having stale tortilla chips for dinner that were just left over from some event that was happening at our house and also just selling you know, anything I could that had value at that point. Unfortunately, I had already sold most anything that had value, but... And then, you know, doing your best in school and in ministry and in work. And it was an overwhelming um, experience. But the end of May, we were on a two-week mission trip to Morocco. And during that trip I received my last paycheck from work that pushed our or the the number in my bank account over ten thousand dollars and so it was awesome I didn't really fully remember that that was going to happen I was kind of disappointed when it kind of when it came time for the trip like Lord I failed you know and then while we're on but it was out of my hands like we were gonna be in uh, Morocco for the rest of that time and um so it was kind of out of my hands to make any more money but then boom that that paycheck hits we made it to 10,000 so that was just like this huge burden lifted off my chest like I'm gonna get to eat groceries again like this is gonna be amazing um I did uh I did ask for Walmart gift cards for Christmas that year um and so for the first you know, a month or two of spring semester, I had some, you know, some free groceries. Um, but nonetheless, a grind. Anyways, a couple, so I did it. That's one cool thing. And it did open the door for us to be able to get married that summer, knowing that we had that chunk. And so we got married on June 27th and 
<clears throat> after we got married, we bought two cars and both being full-time students, like getting a loan for a car was not a reasonable option. And uh, my parents were not interested in being a guarantor by any means. And um, Megan's family would not have been particularly helpful either in the guarantor sense um, through their own uh, credit situations and stuff. And so we knew we had to pay cash for these cars. And so I mentioned how my parents uh, sold us their vehicles kind of at cost in a sense, saved us money by just charging us whatever CarMax would charge them. And then what their the older car they gave to us. But you know, five fifty five hundred dollars later, we've got two cars. And it's like, hey, great. Still don't really know why I needed ten thousand. But um, you know, financially us deciding to get married summer after junior year of college was a stressful experience for my parents especially and required some some great assurance that I'm not going to like ask you for money. For them like getting married was a very clear and hard financial cutoff. Um and so hey anything related to life it's on you. You know, you're going to figure it out. And they're a little bit like how is he going to figure it out, you know? And, but I was like, look, I got this. Trust me. Well, get this. We show up to the airport at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. It might have been even 4 a.m. for like a 6 a.m. flight. Just trying to save that $100, you know, that we had booked a while back. We go to check in. We put in the confirmation number. And it's like, your tickets don't exist. And it's like, what? We go to the help desk, like, look, we got this email confirming our booking. They're looking it up. They're like, you don't have tickets. And we're like, what? This is crazy. And uh, the tickets were expensive. I mean, we spent, it was probably, it was probably close to 2K or maybe 1500 for these flights to <clears throat> this small Colorado airport. For us to go to Vail. Now they say, well, we do have one more flight. It doesn't leave for like nine hours, but we have a flight uh, going out this afternoon and you can book it, but it's going to cost $1,800 more than your original ticket price. And we're like, man, and we're looking at what we have in the bank and what we're about to pay right now. And it, it brought us like, and then we had our budget for like food during the honeymoon. And by the time our honeymoon's over, like that's it, that's all the money. And so literally, if I hadn't saved $10,000 by May, which I absolutely would not ever have done unless I felt specifically like God said it and confirmed it many times throughout the year, then I would have been calling my mom and dad on not even been married 24 hours, <laughs> literally, and asking them for money. And that, who knows, of course, that would have been humiliating personally, but also just in terms of trust with my parents and these conversations I had had about how we're gonna be okay, we have enough. We have enough, we can make this work. It would have just really broken down um, that relationship a little bit and been uh, an unfortunate thing to have to rebound from and, and repair over time. And, and we would have been in the hole, you know, we would have been in debt to my parents and having to pay them off. So that is a testimony I wanna share that God's amazing that he really does speak, you know, just these little things you hear in his voice that end up being so good, so helpful. I'm like, man, I'm so glad that I saved $10,000 because one, it did open the door for us to even get married, which I'll pay anything, you know, to be married now rather than waiting an entire year. And um, it also afforded us the ability to still go on our honeymoon and um, to not have to be in debt, calling my parents for money day one of our marriage. So 
Thank you, Lord, for looking out for your boy, J Train. Appreciate you. And I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to y'all soon. That's all I got for y'all today. Life is worship. God is love.